For the past few weeks, I've been lucky enough to be using the Simplicity SW20V3, a 20 Nm wheelbase from a low-key company called Simplicity. There aren't many reviews of this wheel out there and at €800 Euro without a wheel rim, this may be a great option for someone who's looking to get into direct drive on a budget. €800 Euro is a great price for a 20 Nm wheelbase and today I'll try to figure out why this isn't more popular. I'm Lawrence, welcome to the channel. Introduction. On the left you'll see all the sections in this video. I've put timestamped links to each section in the description below. While you're down there, please hit the thumbs up button to help YouTube suggest this video to others like you. 85% of the people who watch these videos are not actually subscribed to this channel. Please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified about upcoming reviews. A few months ago, I got a message from a subscriber called Brian, or Mr. Kino in my Discord saying that he was buying a Simplicity SW20 V3 and wanted to know if it was okay to have it shipped to me so that I could review it. Of course, I took him up on this generous offer. Not many of you will have heard about this wheelbase. Even fewer of you will know about the various models of midge motors out there, but if you've ever heard of the VRS direct drive wheelbase, it's pretty much the same motor as what we've got here. This is an industrial spec motor which has far more applications than just sim racing. This is a wheel for the type of person who isn't wrapped up in the polished marketing of bigger companies and is trying to get great value for money. First impressions. At a glance, there are lots of parts and long cables. I'm used to seeing a wheelbase being provided with just a power plug. Granted, I never invested time or money in early direct drive systems, which required a lot of knowledge to set up and configure. This is my first time having a small midge wheelbase on my rig. This wheelbase kind of sits somewhere in the middle between DIY and polished consumer grade product. The kit is shipped as two separate packages, so the motor arrived first, and a few days later, after back and forth emails with the courier companies, the second box showed up, thankfully. As I mentioned, this was sent to me by a subscriber. Simplicity were aware that this review was happening, but unfortunately the communication from Simplicity was pretty poor. Brian soon learned that the steering wheel rim that was supposed to be shipped with the package wasn't actually shipped and they didn't have any more in stock. This meant that I could only review the wheelbase on its own, which was disappointing and a massive opportunity to give a small company some free exposure. The wheel rim was half price when bought with the base. Photos of the steering wheel are not really impressive, but apparently it's nicer in the flesh and quite functional, albeit with mediocre build quality. The emergency stop is functional, but a little cheap. It's a very light, plasticky construction, but it performs its function very well. It seems unusual that in 2021, a company who makes a relatively cool and in-demand type of product during this sim racing boom has no social media presence whatsoever. The only way to contact them is through email, and even at that, emails may or may not be responded to. What's included? In the box you get quite a lot of stuff. Even though we think of wheelbases as the product, it's actually just an industrial motor often found in large machines or production lines. The thing that makes this a sim racing product is the control box and the software. The motor is a Midge 130ST M110 and its form factor is often referred to as small Midge. As stated, this is almost the exact same motor that's used in the VRS Direct Force Pro. It also comes with an 8M CPR Absolute encoder, steering wheel hub adapter to connect the steering wheel to the shaft, an adjustable motor mount and an emergency stop. So there's quite a lot in this package. It comes with a lot of cables, which are all more than long enough for most sim setups. There was also a little metal rod included, which I didn't fully understand at first, but apparently it slots into the shaft and is required for certain applications of this motor. Don't throw it away until you're certain that you don't need it. I'm pretty sure there's not a single sim racing application that actually needs it. Pricing. This is the main selling point of the product if you pardon the pun. Unlike the VRS Pro, you get a hub adapter, mounting bracket and an emergency stop with the wheelbase and it comes in at around 800 euro. At least, that was the pre-Brexit price. Unless you're in the UK, expect to pay customs which could see the price jump close to €1,000. Euro. 
which is straying more into the mainstream product pricing, which definitely makes this product less attractive to anyone living outside of the UK, where simplicity is based. If you already have a USB steering wheel rim, it may be an attractive option still at a thousand euro. At that price point, the force feedback is still very good value. Installation, hardware. Hardware installation is relatively simple. I didn't need to read any manuals, but it's not exactly a compact or neat product. There are two giant connections with solid metal 90 degree piping, which connect to the wheelbase to give it power and comms. These grey cables are a bit ugly and a bit dated looking. They plug into this rather large control box. Most modern direct drive systems have the controllers built into the footprint of the wheelbase to make for a more elegant and compact product. I already have way too many cables on my sim rig and adding more cables and even a control box which is similar in size to the motor itself adds a considerable amount of baggage to your rig. I was very happy to see that this setup came with a small midge mounting bracket. This was super easy to install and they provided all the bolts, well almost all the bolts. I still had to use my own nuts and bolts to actually mount it to my universal wheel deck on my rig. I can imagine if someone comes in after a long day at work on Friday and wants nothing more than to use their new expensive toy that they would be bitterly disappointed if they needed to make a trip to the hardware store for some nuts and bolts if they didn't have them lying around. That said, the bracket was flawless once installed and gave me lots of adjustability and rigidity. Installing a wheel rim was relatively simple, but the wheel hub is a bit clunky to say the least. Little bolts on it cling onto the round shaft for dear life. Ensure that you tighten these extremely well. I actually thought I had an encoder failure during a live stream, which caused me to crash and have a lousy event. It turned out that I hadn't tightened these little bolts enough and the wheel hub had a little bit of play in it. This involved needing to take my steering wheel off the hub completely, tightening it all up, and it's not something that you can do mid-race, so make sure you do it right first time. The only thing which is potentially confusing is that the emergency stop needs to plug into a specific port. If you get this wrong, it could be potentially dangerous. It's a little odd that this port is not explicitly marked as being for the emergency stop. The steering wheel I chose to install was the Cube Controls GTX, which is a very good all-rounder. It comes with a flange which has the correct 70mm pattern to match this steering wheel hub. This is the standard Sparco, Momo and OMP PCD. If I was to use the Simplicity SW20 V3 for the long term, I'd look into getting a good quick release system as I like to use different steering wheel rims on different sims and cars. Installation Software Software installation was relatively straightforward. I needed to install a base driver package and a wheel firmware and configuration tool. Simplicity sent a helpful email with installation instructions and even a basic profile to get me started. I know that this is not exactly plug and play, but most wheelbases aren't these days. I was expecting this process to be more complex, but the only issue I encountered was needing to do a restart before the wheel would actually connect properly. Once the initial connection was reliable, I simply left the control box switched on at all times. If you do switch off the control box, you may have to recenter your wheel every time you boot the wheelbase, as I encountered a couple of times. There is an owners group on Facebook which is not moderated in any way. The helpful community members share setups and help to troubleshoot issues which is great to see. However, you'll see that there are plenty of concerns in that group about customer service. Supported Sims Every sim I tried worked quite well. I tried Assetto Corsa, Assetto Corsa Competizione, iRacing and Dirt 2. One sim which performed exceptionally well was Dirt 2, which I traditionally had written off as having fairly washy force feedback. It encouraged me to go back to the drawing board with my own wheelbase to find better settings, and I'm glad I did. In general, a relatively neutral profile, as shown, will perform very well in any sim racing title. I recommend setting the SW20 software bundle to the full 20 newton meters along your sim titles to control the overall gain and other force feedback properties. Force feedback. This is the one that most people care about. The short answer is, the force feedback is really good. It would be great to have a more sophisticated software package with more filters, similar to what we see with the Simicube TrueDrive software, but for most users the software is more than enough. Personally, I was more than happy with the force feedback of this wheelbase. 
I think that my words so far don't really do justice to the power of this motor and the detail you feel through the wheel. It really is a great experience and I would struggle to tell it apart from the Cinecube SC2 Pro in a blind test. Again, this is really subjective, but as far as force feedback goes, I think that 20 newton meters is more or less the sweet spot. When using this wheel, my concerns about the control box and the clunky old school wiring almost disappeared. It was reliable and satisfying to use during my competitive league races, and I would be happy if this was my long term wheel. When loading into sims or booting this device, you need to be cautious and aware of potentially violent rotations once the motor receives power or initial sim input. This is not uncommon with other DD wheelbases, but I found the rotations and jolts to be particularly violent, and the rotations were sometimes as much as 180 degrees. You just don't want to be reaching down to tie your race boots when the wheelbase launches the wheel rim into your head, so be careful. Final thought. This is a relatively affordable, albeit somewhat clunky, force feedback solution. Once installed, it performs very well, and I have no concerns about it other than the massive elephant in the room, the customer service. Before I address that elephant, I will say that anyone who buys this product will be very happy with it, even at the highest price points mentioned in this video. Happy provided the packages arrive on time, if at all. The steering wheel rim, which I didn't review, is reported to have some build quality concerns, like phantom button presses and loose shifter paddles. With no social media presence and an industrial looking website, it's not uncommon to see people on social media asking if Simplicity is a legitimate company. This would worry me if this was my business's livelihood, depending on selling these wheelbases. It does seem to me that this is just a side hustle of another business as there's no way it's sustainable or profitable in its own right. Nobody knows about them and nobody seems to really care. Customers receive hot and cold communications, usually cold when things get complex or packages haven't arrived yet. This is a good product, but the business model doesn't make sense to me really. They ship out the motor separately to the encoder box and accessories, separately as in sometimes they ship them on different days. I think that they do this to distance themselves from the potential damage that a 20 newton meter wheelbase can do when used for sim racing. Maybe they simply provide the products to the customer and the customer ultimately decides whether to use them on their sim racing rig. Again, I'm just speculating and I don't know this firsthand. I could be completely wrong. I often wonder what type of liability steering wheel companies have when it comes to injury. From a PR point of view, I do feel that even a college student with no interest in marketing could help them greatly to promote their product and present it in a better light. Sometimes when I receive products for review, I get insanely good customer service as they want everything to go smoothly. My experience with customer service is never a good gauge of how it actually goes for consumers. But in this case, Brian, who loaned me this wheel, got terrible customer service and he was even temporarily ghosted when he expressed worries or concerns about his shipment not arriving on time and his steering wheel rim was never even sent in the first place. Long story short, if you like this product, buy the VRS Direct Force Pro. Although I've not used the VRS, it's the same small midge motor. The box has a more compact form factor, the cables all have a nicer color and the product is supplied by people who genuinely care about sim racing, all for the same price. Thank you all for watching, please share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below and of course don't forget to subscribe if you like this type of content. I stream live league races on Tuesdays and Thursdays and would love to see you there. I'm Lawrence, thank you for watching.